Hello everyone, I'm Prophet Jermaine Green. I want to talk to you today about the Popeye's angel. Now, wait a minute, I know what you're thinking. The name of the angel wasn't Popeye, but I do want to tell you about the experience that I had with an angel uh, working at Popeye's restaurant. But before I do that, um, I want to take you into a place of where I was at the time. I was actually attending church. Um, I'm a preacher at this time. Not a prophet, um, but operating out of the gift of prophecy. And this was a hard time for me. Actually, um, I was you know, working long hours. I really didn't like my job. It was okay, but you know, I, that was one of the prayers that I had before God. So I was praying and asking God to really just show up in my life and you know, give me some, some type of sign or give me something that would helped me to get through the tough times that I was facing. Just like many of you right now, I'm quite sure that there's some people that are watching this that you've been asking God to, you know, show you, show his face or show anything to let, let, let you know that he's with you. And there's nothing wrong with that type of prayer. Matter of fact, those are the prayers that God really honors because it's truth. It's what's coming from your heart. And so uh, I was in this place asking him to really, you know, show me, you know, show me that you're with me or give me an answer or give me a new job. I mean, whatever it was. And so um, at the time, you know, there was just silence, you know, nothing. I really wasn't getting any type of uh, feedback or, you know, the Holy Spirit wasn't really talking to me. And so it was then when I discovered that, you know, at these times, Holy Spirit is really working out your situation and really doing things behind the scenes. And so he's really preparing you for an encounter. So I want to tell you that today is your day of encounter. If you're watching this right now, we can only give away what we have. I'm about to release to you an encounter with an angel. And because of that, I'm qualified now to speak that into your life. Why? Because I've experienced it myself. And I'm not talking from my imagination. I'm talking from reality, having a authentic encounter with an angel. So I'm at work, it had to be like midnight or so. And uh, normally, you know, we close in the lobby. So I'm a general manager at this time. There are two employees that are working with me and uh, we're working kind of in a rough side of town. So there's a you know door that separates the lobby from the counter. And so I came out to just do my daily closing up. And so I'm wiping tables down and I'm sweeping the floor. And as I'm doing this, uh, I start to feel like a presence behind me. You know, kind of like, you know, if somebody's staring at you, you, you don't have to really look at somebody to know if they're staring at you. You can kind of feel the heat coming from their eyes. That's kind of what it felt like for me. Um, felt like some type of heat that was uh, on my body. And so I knew somebody was behind me. And so mind you now, uh, there's a door to let you in and let you out. I didn't hear the door open at all. I just felt uh, a presence behind me. And so I turned around and there was a man standing behind me. He had a bald head and really fair skin. And I remember this because I was captivated by, there were no blemishes on his skin. And he had no hair at all. His head was bald, his face was bald. It was like, man, where did you come from? Uh, he definitely looked like he didn't fit, especially in the area that we were in. And so he had on a cream suit and he had on some brown shoes. And what I remembered that was so significant about this was if I looked and stared at that man's suit long enough, it looked like his suit would mesh with his shoes. So it was almost like it was, I don't know, it's hard to explain. It's almost like it, they, they ran into each other. And if I blink my eyes, they separated. Anyway, just one of the things that I, re I remember. And so this, this person or this man begins to talk to me and he tells me my name. Never met this man a day in my life, but he told me who I was. He's basically said, you're a prophet and your name is Jermaine. And so I said, yes. Now, mind you, I'm not a prophet at this time, but he called me a prophet. I said, okay, no problem. And then he also uh, called my father's name. He said, uh, and Joe Green is your father, and he's an apostle. At this time, he's just a pastor. He's not an apostle. But I said, okay, I knew this man, you know, um, knew what he was talking about. He was giving me a word of knowledge, at least to my understanding. And so this man begins to tell me I have a message that I have to release to you. 
and you cannot forget this message. And so I'm telling y'all, when he said that to me, I feel something go through my body like, you can't forget this. You know, almost like, you know, you're about to get in trouble. And so everything in you freezes. <laughs> so I was kind of frozen when he said that. And so I knew within my, myself, whatever he's about to say has to be significantly important. And then look at the time, it's past 12 o'clock. Anyway, as he starts to release, release the message, he tells me, he says, tell your father that he's not to close the ministry down and the ministry belongs to God and not to him. And for him not to worry about the provision of the ministry because it's God's ministry and he's going to provide. These are the things that this, this, this man told me. And so when he told me, I was like, okay, yes, sir. You know, I kind of took it in. And then he looked at me again and told me, he said, listen, you cannot forget what I'm telling you. This is very important. So he repeated the same thing again. So I was like, okay, no problem. I don't have a problem with that. We can do it, you know, not a problem. So as he says this and he turns to leave, I turn to leave as well. Cause it was like, it was a sense of urgency that I needed to go call them right away. I was about to call them and tell them, you know, what this angel said. And so I'm going to the back, you know, to, to go behind the counter. And I remember, oh, I didn't thank him. So I turned around to thank him. By that time, the door was closing. And so I went outside the door and I looked to the left, I looked to the right, I looked around the building and there was no man. I didn't see him anymore. I knew then I just talked to an angel. And so I went back into the back uh, with the uh, other coworkers and uh, you know, they were looking at me like, what's wrong? I was like, you know, y'all didn't see, you know, y'all didn't hear the conversation I just had. They said, yeah, we heard you talking to yourself. And I said, huh? They said, we heard you talking to yourself. And I said, what do you mean? I said, I was just having a conversation. You didn't see the man that was in, it, you know, in the lobby? They said, no, we were looking at the camera and we saw you talking to yourself. I need to let you all know there were security cameras in the back on the counter. And so they both were looking at the camera, wondering why am I talking to myself? So they didn't even see the angel at all. I want to pause right there and let you know, whenever you have an angelic encounter, it's usually by yourself. Now, I'm not saying it's limited to, you know, um, just being by yourself, but I do want you to understand that angelic encounters or encounters with God, normally he's going to show up when it's just you and him. Now, they were around, but they couldn't see what I saw. But I know what I saw. I ain't crazy. So anyway, once I had the conversation with them, I picked up the phone to call, and of course my parents didn't pick up the phone. Oh, by the way, y'all, Joe Green is my father. He's also my pastor. And so I called him on the phone to try to get him, but nobody answered the phone. And so I knew then we need to hurry up and close this business down because I got work to do. I got to go tell, tell them what this angel has said because by this time I'm in awe because I can't believe I just had an encounter with an angel. And what's crazy to me is he, he was a man. He looked like a man. There was no way for me to tell. There wasn't the feathers and there wasn't the, you know, there wasn't any, you know, bright lights or anything like that. It was just like having a regular conversation with a person. And so understanding that, uh, I, I didn't know then, but I found out later on that, you know, you know angels can come in the form of people. And when they come in the form of people, that's why it's so important that you be kind to people and loving. And you also make sure that you're in a place to, you know, help people and don't turn people away if you can help them because you never know. You may be encountering an angel. And so I had this encounter with this angel. And so now I am frantic. I'm like, we got to hurry up and close. Well, I think we closed that that restaurant down in an hour. <laughs> we probably didn't clean everything, but no, I'm just kidding. No, we closed everything down uh, as quickly as we could. And so I rushed over to my, my parents' house. And when I got there, of course, they were sleeping. And, um, you know, I was trying to, you know, wake my father up. And so finally he got up and he came. And I began to tell him what the angel said. And I released to him what the angel told me to tell him. And when I got done telling him what the angel said, my father, I call him my Superman. I can count on my fingers how many times I've seen him cry. 
Now, don't get me wrong. Crying in worship don't count. <laughs> I'm talking about just crying, period, in the house and all of that. But anyway, as soon as I told him what the angel said, he dropped to his knees and began to wail like a baby. I, and so he's crying and I look over, my mother's crying and then I'm starting to tear up. Now, I don't even know what I'm crying for because at this point in time, I'm not sure what this message is saying or what is it for? You know, I know what the angel said, but I didn't know what it was pertaining to. And so understanding that, you know, whatever this is, it's moved him because he's on his knees crying. <laughs> and so not right away after he got done crying, he, 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 he gets to his feet and he looks at me and my mother and he tells her and me that the night before he had told God on his knees he was resigning as a pastor, that he was closing the doors of the church because he had been praying to God, asking for provision and nothing was coming. And so he felt like, well, maybe, you know, this is not what you want me to do. So he was resigning. And so he got an angelic encounter through me an angelic word to help shift his life. Now, 28 years later, he's still pastoring and he is the apostle now that the angel saw when he was a pastor. Now, I want to tell you something to all the leaders that are watching this. Don't be concerned about what you don't have. If God called you, he has everything you need in order for your ministry to thrive or in order for your ministry to be successful. I believe that sometimes we get so involved with our work that we start taking ownership of it and forgetting that it was God that called you. So it's his ministry, not yours. You need to understand, leader, that it's not time to quit. It's time for you to divorce yourself. Take yourself out of the equation and place God there. If God called you, he's going to provide. He's going to make provision. So you can't close the door. And the reason why is because people are waiting on what you have. I'm an example of that. Um, years later, uh, I end up getting into an accident. Um, ran, over, ran off the road by a trash truck and I end up being paralyzed on my left side of my body. I had no feeling, no movement. I wasn't able to, you know, do much for myself. Uh, I could do certain things with my right side, but my left side was just, you know, dead. And so that being said, I was confined to a wheelchair and it was my father, Apostle Joe Green and First Lady Edna Green that came to uh, the hospital. I was in a coma and when I came out of a coma, they were the first two faces that I saw. Now, mind you, I'm trying to trying to show you the importance of why you have to make sure you give the ministry back to God. Because if my father would have quit, he wouldn't have been there to encourage me when I opened my eyes. The story doesn't stop there. I end up getting healed Easter Sunday, 2007. Resurrection Sunday, 2007. And so that being said, um, we were in service and you know, I'm a minister, I'm preaching at the time. Uh, Apostle Joe Green said, hey, come on up. I want you to do the benediction. So I grabbed the microphone and, you know, we're about to send each other home. You know how it is. The benedictions, a lot of us get excited over that because that means now we get to eat. Come on here. But anyway, I got the microphone and when I got the microphone, uh, I began to pray. And as I began to pray, the Holy Spirit began to invade the prayer and the Holy Spirit began to word my mouth and so some of the things he told me was he said that I'm about to perform a miracle I'm about to release a miracle in the midst of this service if we get on one accord he said that I'll come in the midst and I'll release a miracle now this is what God is telling me to tell them and so we're all praising God and all of that now it gets kind of sketchy here because after I begin to pray my parents were on the front row and they said that once I said that, I jumped out of the wheelchair, walked down the middle aisle, and every row I began to pass, people began to fall out under the glory of God. Now, if Pastor Green would have made the decision to close his doors, 
I would probably still be confined in a wheelchair. That's why you, it's so important to understand if God called you, he's already ahead of you. And you don't really know who you're connected to or whose life that God is going to allow you to change. I was in the ministry that God gave Apostle Joe Green when I received my miracle. And many miracle signs and wonders have been done in his ministry. So I want to encourage you and let you know, not just for the leaders, but for anyone. If God has given you something to do, don't get discouraged. Don't throw in the towel. Give it back to him and trust him. He's going to provide. He's going to give you what you need because miracles, signs and wonders follow those who believe. And you don't understand that what you're carrying can potentially shift and change somebody's life.